So, dahil sa dead silence, <laughs> yan. So, again, good afternoon, everybody. Si Richard lang giseng? Joke lang. <laughs> si Richard na may life goal na? Ano life goal ni si Richard? Tapusin yung Bible. Ay, hindi. Kanina yun? Ah, buti pa si Isaac. <laughs> okay, game. So, this is our third week. Last week, uh, uh, this is our third week with our series, Life Goals. That is, to succeed at what truly matters. Okay? So, in the very first week, we redefined success. Okay? So, success, true success, is becoming all that God wants you to be, doing all that He wants you to do, and hearing Him say, Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your master. And so, we looked at uh, last week how to succeed at school. Because it, Alma, matters. matters. <laughs> Alma matters. So, we, and we know, and according to Kuya Mio's message, uh, to succeed at school is to be faithful at what God has called you to do. And we know that We have some frustration, some pain, some ano pa ba, victories at school. But in light of death, this thing makes us, co- uh, make, it makes us contemplate, makes us think what truly matters. Sabi ni Dwight, Lu- da, ni D.L. Moody, Our greatest fear should not be failure, but succeeding at something that doesn't really matter. And what does matter? Diba? So, In the third week, this, uh, this uh, afternoon, we will look at life goals. Succeed in balancing life. Okay. Tana. <laughs> so, so we, would, we would like to define first what balance is. So, we'll talk about balancing life. What, what is balance? We could say that balance is... The amount of money in a financial repository. It's like this guy says, Armando, it's your credit card company. They are calling about your outstanding balance. Sabi ni Armando, sigh, fans everywhere. Also, <laughs> also, balance is amount of money owed. So, balance. Also, balance can be a balance diet. <laughs> Where... Your, the nutrients in your food are all complete. Okay? So it means that there's an even distribution of the nutrients that we need. Or balance is having the opposite of another. It's like, sabi dito, to have a balanced life, you need a dog to adore you and a cat to ignore you. Or if you have experienced this since you're Students, who here experienced na gumising ng maaga? Okay. Malamig yung tubig. Ano ginagawa nyo? Hindi naliligo daw. <laughs> okay. Some, sometimes we look at, every morning we feel like a mad scientist getting the perfect balance. With hot water and cold water. Natry ko na yan. Minsan, ano, minsan yung lamig nasa taas, yung init nasa baba, tapos kailangan ganun pa. <laughs> Para mainit. Di ba? Ang hirap. Ang hirap makuha yung balance. Minsan sobrang init. Pagkagbuhos ko, nanginginig ako sa init talaga. Anyway, but we look at, we look at life. What is balance in life? And for example, this age-old uh, quotation or saying, what is a long life if lived in poverty or and illness, di ba? Bigyan ka nga ng mahabang buhay, nakaratay ka naman sa higaan. Nakahiga ka lang, tinitingnan mo yung mga kalarumo or yung mga bata sa labas na nag enjoy ng buhay. Is it, it is, in a way, suffering as well. And, or what is wealth if acquired at, at, at the cost of one's health and untimely death? Kunyari, uh, or in, in your ano, in your uh, in your dictionary or in your context, what is high grades if uh, gathered or acquired at the cost of two hours sleep, many fevers, and no social life, or maybe leading to untimely death? What is it? And we say that the key 
to life is balance. Di ko kaya gawin yan. <laughs> but to know, uh, this afternoon, what we'll look about, what what we'll look out, uh, at is how to balance life. And the Christian life, balancing life is a myth. Why? Because we look when we say balancing life, we look at life as compartments, and we go at each compartment, balancing it so that it will be okay. It will be, we will live a life of comfort. But the Christian life says that there's no division between secular and holy. Everything is treated as one. And I would like to ask you to stand up. Okay? And we'll read the passage for this afternoon. And I would like you to, have, uh, to make it lively so that you can wake up the person sitting next to you. Okay? <laughs> Come on! So, lahat ng mga ganda at lahat ng mga pogi, mag-ingay nyo. <laughs> okay, let's, let's, let's read this. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 to 17, 1 to 3, go. Look. Ha, ha. Oh, wait lang, wait lang. 1, 2, 3, go. How you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish. But understand what the will of the Lord is. Let us pray. Lord Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your word. And we thank you, Lord, for guiding us. May we learn more about, uh, your, about balancing life, about what it means to really balance life. And may we look at Christ, Lord God, at, at how he embodied this great uh, thing. We ask, Lord, that you may open our hearts, our ears, our eyes, that we may be able to apply whatever we may learn today. This we ask in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay. So, this afternoon again, we're going to look at life goals, balancing life. But before we go forward, I'd like just to give a proper context dun sa binasa natin kanina. So, si Paul dito, sinulat niya yung Ephesians para i-remind yung mga, mga tao dun sa Ephesus, sa Church of Ephesus, that they are now, they were once dead, in cry uh, they were they were once dead in uh, that to god because of their sins but now they are alive in god through christ jesus he also reminds them that they are united in one body as they are united in christ so chapter 5 makikita mo yung marami niyang encouragement exhortations to walk to walk in in manner and with this truth paul then encourages them to practice what they are in position that they that is to walk in a manner worthy of their calling a manner worthy of being bought for a price in this series of encouragement he tells them to walk in wisdom and to live a balanced life is to walk in wisdom and we will look about we will look at that this afternoon so for today's topic in order for us to recall it easily it's it can be summarized in one sentence okay the balanced life is characterized by prudence shown in our priorities being perceptive of god's will again the balanced life is characterized by prudence shown in our priorities being perceptive of god's will so the balanced life sabi natin is a prudent life a prioritized life a perceptive life perceptive of God's will. Let's look at the first verse in the passage. Okay? So, Paul encourages us. We open with the, uh, we, we open with the word, look carefully. When, one's, when, when someone tells you, look carefully, it pushes you or it urges you to examine, to contemplate, to weigh the good and the bad, the disadvantages and the advantages. And here, Paul tells us to examine how we walk, how we conduct ourselves. Kung paano natin pinapaki- dinadala yung sarili natin. So, not as unwise, but as wise. Now we know that the balance that we can say that it is characterized by prudence. Prudence meaning you have you have this uh, motivation to continue but you look forward you, ex- you you think about 
the future before you do anything else. Or in this sense, in the Life Goes Series sense, we have an eternal perspective. And that is to weigh everything with regards to eternity and Christ. And we have two kinds of, two types na distinction na binigay ni Paul. Sabi niya dito, not as unwise people, but as wise. Kuya Glenn, ano yung unwise? Ano yung pinagkaiba niya sa wise? Yung word na un. Joke lang. <laughs> but we hear, we know that in Proverbs, we're in this, one of the greatest book on wisdom. We have a difference. We, ha- we have this, uh, this definition of what wis- what, being wis- uh, but what being wise and what being unwise means. So we have in Proverbs 12, 15, the way of the fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man listens to advice. We could say that a fool is someone who seems or who thinks that he is always right without regarding what is needed to be done uh, what, without hearing other people's opinion. Or we could say that being a fool is, in the biblical sense, rejecting God's leading. And being a wise man is hearing that leading and then applying it to your life. The wise man, sabi sa Proverbs 2, 1 to 5, not only is wise or seeks wisdom, but he receives it. He treasures it. He is attentive to it, inclining his heart to it, seeking it that when he seeks it, he knows that it is the key to understand God's will. To understand the fear of the Lord and to find the knowledge of God. And Quiglin, what is the beginning of wisdom? Is it your wisdom tooth? No. <laughs> it is the fear of the Lord. So Proverbs 1 says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. This uh, wisdom, this uh, fear of the Lord is not a cowering or begging fear. Hindi siya natatakot ako sa kanya, kaya ayoko nang lumapit sa kanya. It is a reverent fear. Na, tignan na natin yung sa bahay. What, are you afraid of your parents? But do you love your parents? Diba? So, in a way, you respect their position and you allow them to exercise their authority over you. Sabi natin, pag may isang magulang, hindi yan mag-iisip ng masama para sa anak niya. Ang gusto niyan, yung best para sa kanya. And we see that in God as well. God wants us to understand His will in order to know what we will do or what we must do. And it starts with fearing God. When we have this great awe, this great um, proper, this proper respect and honor of God, then we start to become wise. But the question is, are we wise on our own? Many here, including me, would say otherwise. I'm not wise. I do foolish things as well at times. Because the Bible says that the heart is deceitful. It is, it is in our very nature to be unwise. Now, Kuya Glenn, ano nang gagawin ko? Again, we have to come to God. We have to humble ourselves. We have to look at ourselves that we are sinners in need of grace, in need of leading. And, we, and if we are to surrender our lives to Christ, then therefore we are going to surrender to His Lordship as well. Hindi lang siya, I know God and I just know God. It's I know God and I will follow God with a reverent fear. Knowing this, knowing that we need wisdom, James gives us an instruction. In James 1, 5 to 8, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to him. 
kung kung tayo ay walang wisdom, sa tingin natin wala tayong wisdom na gawin ng isang bagay, kailangan nating lumapit sa Diyos at hingin yun sa Kanya. And we know that God will give it to us. But there is a, um, paano bang, ano ba yung tamang word? Caveat? There's a takeaway with this. Not, but let him ask in faith. With no, doubt, with, with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man and stable in all his ways. When we ask something with faith or in faith, do we believe that God will give it to us? When we ask for wisdom, we also gain wisdom by opening God's word. We just not, we not only pray, but we open God's word and let it speak to us. And then we ask God, God, help me to be wise. Guide me to be wise. Empower me to be wise. Lead me to be wise. I know that my heart is deceitful. I know that the greatest inclination of my heart is to run away from you. And God gives us in his word, ask me, ask me, I will give it to you. And to live a prudent life is to be wise. And Paul, ex- Paul encourages us to walk not as unwise people, but as wise. But how? Paul continues on with this. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, not as a fool, but one who carry who is being led by God by making the best use of the time because the days are evil. Pag sinabi ba natin, the days are evil, is Monday evil, Tuesday evil, Wednesday evil? Hindi, di ba? <laughs> okay. But the balanced life, we say here that it is a prioritized life. It is to make the best use of your time. In Galatians 1.4, Paul also tells this to them, that who gave himself Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to deliver us from the present evil age, according to the will of God and according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. So we know that this present age is evil, but Kuya Glenn, what does that mean? Paul, si Paul, Sinulat niya to kasi he knows that those people who are professing Christians are in a way one step or even half step to persecution or to be to have their own bodies destroyed their uh, identities mocked but that may not apply to us that much this day but we can say that our days are days of active evil. Paano ko nasabi yun? Kasi, if you're going to look at it, if you will examine your day from morning to afternoon to night, does this day encourage you to be Christ-like? Does the things in social media that you look at or when you walk outside Eastwood, there's a billboard and it says, follow Christ. No, it does not do that. We know that there are the great thieves of time. Ano yung mga thieves of time na yun? It's the minions of the world, those, those uh, things that are calling us to be tempted. There is also our flesh, di ba? Na... Gusto lang is mag-desire, mag-desire at mag-desire at makuha kung ano yung dinedesire niya. And there is also the devil who is our enemy. So this evil, this great, uh, this thief of time may range from high-tech cell phone or acceptable preoccupations to simple idle talk or ungoverned thoughts. So nagsimula siya doon sa mga maliliit na bagay na akala natin hindi 
ay akala natin okay siya. So, but the natural course of our minds, our bodies, our world, and our days leads us toward evil, not toward Christ-likeness. Would you agree with that? Okay? So, if you're going to look at it, our thoughts need to be disciplined. Like water, they tend to flow downhill or stand stagnant. Na, na anong ginagawa niya pag idol kayo? Natutulog? Sana ganun rin ako. De, when you're, if, in all honesty, when you're idol, that's where everything blows out. It is where either your mind goes downhill. As men, we struggle, we know we struggle with lustful thoughts. And when we are idle, it just goes rampant. Or when we uh, just procrastinate, we look at the clouds and we do not do what we are supposed to do. That's why in Colossians, Colossians 3, 2, yung first, uh, first week natin, we are commanded to set our minds on things above. And without this conscious, active, disciplined setting of the direction of our thoughts, they will be unproductive at best, evil at worst. May kalaban, di ba kalaban natin yun? In, minsan, unproductive tayo kasi nag-procrastinate tayo or evil kasi yung time na yun nagagamit natin sama-sama. Our bodies as well. Our bodies are inclined to ease, pleasure, gluttony, maraming kumain, sloth, pag gusto mong tulog lang ng tulog, kaya yung kanta ni Bruno Mars na today I don't want to do anything, I just want to lay in my bed, it's not a godly thing to do. Unless we practice self-control, our bodies will tend to serve evil more than God. And we must carefully discipline ourselves in how we walk in this wor world, else we will conform more to its ways rather than the ways of Christ. Diba? So we must practice self-control. Also, our days, sabi natin, our days of active evil. Because every temptation and evil force are active in them. The use of time is important because time is the stuff which, says, which days are made. And we know that this time cannot be reversed. Na pag may nagawa kang mali, hindi mo na yun mababalik. That's why when uh, naalala ko nung bata pa ako, may, ba may bago kaming TV, Luma pa yung TV, bago, bagong TV. Tapos, alam nyo yung nangyayari pag ini-sprayan yung TV ng tubig? Ano nangyayari? Di ba meron siyang rainbow? Yun. As a child, what I did is I sprayed water on that TV set. And like, oh, it's amazing. There's so many rainbow. Tapos biglang, psh, nag, na biglang nag-change na siya ng channel ng mabilis. Tapos pagdating ng tatay ko, sabi niya, ano ginawa mo sa TV? Bagong bili lang yan ha, kabago-bago lang ha. Ah, uh, inisprayan ko ng tubig. Pero tignan mo, pag pinindot mo yung volume key, nag-stop siya. <laughs> diba? It, we are foolish. <laughs> we are foolish. And we, we, we think that we are wise. Ako, kala ko, wise ako yun. Kasi pag pinindot ko yung volume key, nag-stop na yung pag-change ng channel ng TV namin. Pero sira na yung TV kasi nilagyan ko siya ng tubig. So, how are, the question we need to ask is, how are we using our time? Are we making ourselves to be see that when that we even lack a time with the Lord? Okay? Or how do we make use of business as an excuse to have time with God? Or what if God says that He's busy to you? When you pray, Lord, I would like you to grant me this and that, empower me that I may serve you towards, to, throughout this day, and God says, Oh, because you didn't have time for me, I'm busy too, I'll go and do otherwise. But God does not do that. We know that we can run to Him. And we know that we can ask for wisdom. So sometimes, we must say no to do something else in order to be more productive, but all the more be God-glorifying. And we know this great example in Jesus' days. It is, great, it is greatly embodied by Christ. When Christ lived on earth, He showed this example. He walked as a wise man. We know that, we know that Jesus, throughout His life, He just 
walks, uh, he just fades away and he goes to prayer and he's communing with God the Father and then he goes back to serving God's people, preaching God's kingdom to those who are in need of it. And we know that this also must be applied to us if we are saying that we are children of God. Okay? Makes sense, no? So, lastly, it says here, Ephesians 5, 15 to 17, Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Okay? So, this word we know, being foolish, means that those people who are rejecting God's direction, rejecting God's leading. And this word, I would like to look at, this is the key to balancing life. Look at this word, understand. Understand. What does it mean to understand? To know? To perceive? But this Greek word there, the Greek word, the Greek word there that is used literally means to interweave, to intertwine, to, to have these facts, to join facts to, into a comprehensive interlocking whole, to synthesize or to combine. Understanding His will means integrating each and every area of life in submission to His will. And we know that being perceptive is understanding the will of God. So, Kuya Glenn, akala ko ba pag-understanding the will of God lang, ano lang yun, pag sa major decisions lang siya nag apply pag, pag meron akong gustong gawin na sobrang bigat, kunyari, mag apply ako ng school, kunyari, pipili ako ng ministry, kunyari, magpipili ako ng college, or pipili ako ng job, understanding God's will, yun, yun Kuya Glenn, di ba? Kailangan ma-understand ko yung will ni God para tama yung mapili kong choice. But that is not what the text is saying. We know in Romans 28, 29 to 30, that for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. And we know that this, this thing, to understand the will of God, is to be conformed to the image and likeness of Christ. We know that the balanced life is not doing everything in moderation, rather it means being obedient in every area of life. And we look at life. Sabi natin, pag tinignan mo yung buhay, meron tayong school, meron tayong work, meron tayong family, meron tayong ano pa, ministry. Tapos, ang gagawin natin, babalansihin natin sila, moderate lang. Tapos, okay na. But that is not what we are called to do. We're called to interweave, to join them, to treat them as a whole, and that we may glorify God in every area of life. So, the question here, as a student, with many deliverables, what is the will of the Lord? It is to study for His glory. Sometimes that demands you to stay up and review. Yes or no? Yes. Tapos, uh, yes. <laughs> it demands you to review. and But also, it also demands for us as a children of God to rest. To practice what to practice godly rest diba because sabi natin we have to surrender every area of our life therefore as a student with great deliverables we must not procrastinate minsan kasi nauubos ng teleserye or ng k-drama or ng anime or ng ano pa ba youtube yung oras natin pero we have to study for his glory sabi natin okay Looking deeper, as a servant to the church, when you are asked to serve in ministry, do you still prepare for it? As the part of worship team, do you still study your songs? Or do you pray about the people around you serving with you? Do you do it with zeal? 
and do you serve God alone? It is to be obedient in God. As a son or daughter, anak na babae or lalaki, diba? what's the will of the Lord? It is to honor thy parents and to treat people around you as your neighbor, to love them, to honor them. How are you when you're asked to do things in the house? Do you become bats? <laughs> Bakit ako? Bat ako. Nagiging bat man sila. Bat ako. Diba? Or do you treat your siblings as someone who, be, who must be treated with respect? O binubuli nyo lang sila? Kasi kapatid nyo na sila. Diba? How are we to submit this area of life to God? Now, for example, oh, outside pa. Uh, for example, if we're trying to go outside or to, do, to go to the gym, diba? why are we going to the gym? Is it so that we can post it on Instagram and we like, praise God, tapos nakatapless ka? Gusto mo ba? <laughs> diba? It's not that. We do it, if we're doing it in obedience to God's will, we do it in order to be fit, productive, energized to do whatever he wants what what want what god wants us to do diba or for example with our mental health are we focused on the trials we have as christ or are we focused on uh, are we focused on our trials or as christ are we focused on the will of the father for us are our thoughts pleasing to god what are the things that you're compl- contemplating about most of the time? Is it your crush? Your grades? Your family problems? Or are you contemplating more about God's truth? And knowing that God is wise, He will not be mistaken to give you trials in your life in order, in order to conform you to the image and likeness of His Son. Or are you worried because of your grades? or the pain that are caused by other people. Diba? Narami natin kailangan isipin. But with that, we know that the balanced life is a life that is what? Prudent, being wise, making use of time, being the best use of time, that is to have priorities, and to be, ano yung last? Tulog na sila. <laughs> Last one is to be perceptive of God's will, to intertwine, to understand, to, cons- to, to unite all those things and surrender it to God. Now, in light of all these things, what must we do? Ito na yung application natin. Application number one is we must examine our individual walk with Christ. In light of what we have learned this afternoon, we have to look at God's word. And we, we look at this. In Second Peter 1, 10 to 11, it says, Therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election. For if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. For in this way, there will be richly, pro- there, there will be richly provided for you an entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What does it mean to be diligent to confirm your calling and election? That is to examine ourselves and to look if we are being conformed with God. Nakita na ba kayo ng tinamaan ng truck? Hindi pa, no? Pero nakita ng mga aksidente. So, when someone is hit by a truck, we know that his life will be changed. <laughs> or his body will be changed, diba? And we know also that if someone is found by God, his life will change. He will now seek what is of Christ rather than of the world. So, to confirm or to conform, uh, uh, to be diligent is to examine ourselves. And to not just ex- examine ourselves, kasi kung examine lang, Ang mangyayari lang doon is madidepress ka. Kasi ang makikita mo, marami kang mali, marami kang shortcomings, marami kang hindi kayang gawin. 
But all the more, this self-examination should motivate us to run to Christ. And this is where the promises of Christ applies. And prayer works hand in hand. So when we know that God has promised us to be conformed to the image and likeness of His Son, we know that everything happens so that we can be more like Christ. And when we now know, as we examine ourselves, when we now know the weaknesses, the shortcomings of our very own selves, then prayer will be the spreading of our helplessness in God. Ang sabihin mo doon, Lord, kulang ako sa ganito. Lord, kailangan ko pong, ito po yung struggle ko. Kailangan ko pong maging mas uh, productive. Please help me. I know that my heart is inclined to be to procrastinate. Also, let's look at this one. Uh, application number two. If we now have examined ourselves, and if we now know that we are weak, therefore, we must run to Christ, also to run in His Word. So, we have to have a balance of hearing and doing. Okay? So, now, sabi natin, gusto natin maging wise, buksan natin yung Word of God, and sometimes, most of the times, the only thing that we have is knowledge. Or, in a way, propositional knowledge. Ano yung propositional knowledge? Yun yung knowledge na pwede mong isummarize yung isang malaking fact about God, about God and to make it simple for other people. But, the problem with that is that if you can, okay, you can articulate, gusto nyo, pwede mong sabihin kung ano yung mga doctrines ng baptism, yung bro- doctrines ng, ng, ng repentance, yung mga ganun, or pwede kang mag-apologetics sa mga kaibigan mo, pero hindi yun yung end ng study. There are people who agree in their mind but are far away from the experience of the true knowledge of God. What does that mean? We can say that the greater grasp you have cognitively in your mind, kung meron kang maraming knowledge kay God, parallel itabi mo, with the lack of true experience, does not put you nearer to God, but it pushes you farther from Him because we are more likely to be blinded with the lack of personal relationship with God because we have this cognitive information about Him. Ang rami na nating alam, pero hindi natin na-experience yung alam natin. When we say that God is our portion forever, do you believe that God is really your portion? When God says He will never leave you nor forsake you, do you believe that God is watching you always? When we believe that God is wise, when trials come to your life, what happens? You deny that fact that God is wise, that He allowed those things to happen to you for a purpose? Or when you believe that God is always present, do you use it as a license to sin? Knowing that He is looking at you? So, we pursue cognitive knowledge, this knowledge of God, with the view to apply it, to have a personal knowledge of God and have a real relationship with Him. Sino dito may kaibigan? Lahat naman siguro, di ba? Kilala mo yung kaibigan mo. Di ba? Pero iba yung kilala mo yung kaibigan mo sa so meron kang relationship sa kaibigan mo. Baka kilala mo lang siya, pero hindi mo siya kilala. Ba- kilala mo lang siya, pero hindi mo siya talaga kilala. Di ba? So, James is also one of the great texts that we run to for this. James 1, verse 20 to 25, it says, But be, what is this? Ano ulit? Kigisingin ko kayo, intok na kayo. But be doers of the word, not hearers only. Ano yung sa dulo? Ano yung sa dulo? Deceiving yourselves. So, this is one of our struggles, right? Sometimes we only hear, we do not do. We deceive ourselves that we know Christ because we think we know much about Christ. But Paul says us that Paul tells us that for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. 
for he looks at himself and goes away and at, at once forget what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. We see here a picture of what a hearer only means. Diba? Pag pumunta ka sa salamin, Girls, mangilig ko na sa bahay niya. Pag gumunta ka sa salamin, di ba? Pag tinignan mo yung sarili mo, tapos, mag-aayos ka. Di ba? Tapos, alis ka ng, alis ka ng CR, makikita, tapos hindi mo na alam ko ano itsura mo ulit. You have forgotten what you look like. But God commands us to persevere, to push through. Di ba? Kasi, meron tayong blessing that being no hearer, who forgets but a doer who acts he will be blessed in his doing that's also one of god's promises and one thing that needs to be applied in our life not just known when paul wrote to timothy sabi niya first timothy 4 12 15 to 16 let no one despise you for your youth but set believer set the Set, but set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Paul also urges, practice these things. Immerse yourself in them so that all may see your progress. Keep a close watch on yourself and on the teaching. Persist in this, for by so doing, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Paul does not just instruct Timothy to read and study but to apply whatever he has known. Okay? And so, I would like to give you an example as I close. So, I'd like to, to introduce to you to someone again. Kung last, yung first, yung first time may pinakilala ako sa inyo, yung pakilala ulit ako sa inyo. Okay? I would like, you to, intru- I would like to introduce you this person. Anong tawag din sa akin niya? <laughs> All this na siya eh, no? But I would like you to give I would like to give you a history of who this man is. Sigurado hindi na kayo mag hindi na kayo tatawa after nito. So, let's start. Born in New England in the 1750s, he was a first generation black slave in colonial America. Abandoned by his parents, he was taken by a white Christian family whom he served till the age of 21. In their home, he was taught of the ways of the Lord and sound doctrine, and he matured at the outbreak of the Revolutionary War. How do you balance your life in time of a war? And how do you balance your life in the time of great racial discrimination? This guy, he served as a Minuteman. Ano yung Minuteman? Ito yung group ng people, ng mga tao na nag-pledge that they will take up arms, that they will uh, fight in a minute's notice during and, immediately, during and immediately before the American Revolution. So he also is a, he also was a regular soldier until he was moved out because of his illness. So nagkasakit siya. Also, he was ordained as a minister. In fact, he is the first African American ever to be formally called into the ministry. Opportunis, opportunities to step into pastoral ministry were limited by racial prejudice, despite the evident character, confirmed call, and preaching gift. So this man is racially discriminated. The time of war is there. Many things are happening. And he then later received a call from a small congregation of 42 people requesting his service as a pastor. And so, he became a pastor of an all-white church for 33 years. Okay? He preached the mighty gospel through his 70s, even after he was dismissed from his pulpit when the tables had turned doctrinally, politically, and racially. This man who committed his life to serve with other people was rejected by his own congregation. But he persevered to preach the gospel. And he summarized his rejection as this. He had lived with people of Rutland for 30 years 
and they were so sagacious, they were so mindful of what, it, what, what he is, that at the end of the time, they found out that he was a Negro in their, in their context. And so he, they turned him away. He was turned away from that congregation he was serving. And he, but he still continued to serve the body of Christ and devoted 48 years to pastoral ministry. How can you balance your life in time of war, in a time of discrimination, persecution? And he is well known for this quote. Diba last week, uh, last time meron rin. So let's look at this. This is what he said. Above all, the great God with approval or disapproval beholds the transac- transaction of this day. God looks at what you did. He sees what the motive what motives govern you and will proclaim them before the assembled universe. It is a solemn and affecting thought. The work before you is great and requires great searching of the heart, great caution and self abasement or humility. How necessary that you feel your dependence on God, you cannot perform any part of your work without his help. Under a sense of weakness, go to him for help. And he continues, Although the work is too great for you, yet let such considerations as this revive your desponding heart, your heart that is losing confidence, your heart that is being weared down by problems. Because the cause is good, better than life, you may well give up all for it, and the campaign is short, and your warfare will, will soon be accomplished, the reward is great, and being found faithful, you will receive a crown of glory that fades not away. This guy, he was called the Black Puritan. His name is Lemuel Hines. A slave, racially discriminated, in the time of war, how will you balance your life? But this man is just a man. He cannot accomplish those things without Christ. And we know that the balanced life is characterized by prudence, shown in our priorities, being perceptive of God's will. In light of death, we see the shortness of life. And in light of eternity, we see the gravity of what will happen to us when we face judgment. We are sinners who are in need of a Savior. And because sin has infected and affected our mind, that the way we live our lives are only to glorify ourselves. So what we need to do is we have to run to Christ, humble ourselves, know that we are sinners, Know that we, as we examine ourselves, we will know more and more and more and more that we need a Savior, that we need someone to lead us. And that alone is Christ. Only when we are renewed by the Holy Spirit as we come in repentance and in faith in Christ and through the renewing of our mind through His Word, may we be able to change our ways. Only those things So we ask that let us run to him for wisdom to live and to prepare for the life to come. Let us examine ourselves and repent of our evil ways and surrender it all to Christ. Let us pray. Lord Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the gift of prayer and we thank you for your word. We ask, Lord, that you may allow us to realize that we are indeed foolish, that our hearts are deceiving us, all the more that our days are evil. So may we ask, Lord God, that you may give us wisdom to make the best use of our time, to understand your will, that we may be able to apply whatever truth we have learned, not to take take us farther from you, but to draw us nearer to you as we experience your grace. We ask, Lord God, that whatever we have learned today may be applied 
not just Lord God in 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 elevate but in every area of our life may we have an obedient life in every facet we ask Lord God that that you may bless Lord the breakout sessions that we will have this afternoon may we be able to share our understanding of the message and may we be able Lord God to share our struggles as well knowing Lord that we need your guidance because we ask in Jesus name Amen and Amen